Wasatch Heat Cable here. Today we're going to teach you a few things you need to know to install constant water heat cable on a simple entry gutter system and to avoid a lot of the mistakes that most homeowners make. So we want to teach you those tips and tricks that the professionals know so you can do your install on your own and do it right. All right, here we're on a roof. We've got this ready to go to put new cable on. We need it in the valleys. We need it around this porch area so the ice doesn't build up in the walkway. That's a hazard and a danger zone. We want to make sure we channel all the water through the gutter to the downspout at that end and clear the roof edges in the process. We're at a point now, we know where we need the cable. We're going to start measuring everything out, mark out everything we need to put in and place the clips in the roof and get it ready for the cable to go in. We're on a brand new roof. We've got to install heat cable. Two of the most common things people miss, the valley. The valley is an accumulation point where snow feeds down to the valley in both directions and it accumulates ice right here. This is a common point where water leaks into the house. So we want to make sure we hit these valleys. The second one is the gutter. Anything you heat from the roof, you have to allow it to get to a downspout, which is at that end, and down to the ground. If you don't heat the gutter, you're going to be back to square one and putting all the ice right on the roof. Now that we know where to put the cable, we need to start measuring the roof. All of our points, our valleys, this you're going to need a tape measure. Get one that's going to work for you and measure the full length of the roof. Okay, we're going to now measure from the gable of the roof, which is out here at the edge, and we're going to measure into your valley point. I have three feet to this point, so I'll go three and a half is to here. I will measure this inside. It's about two feet. You don't have to be exact on these, but I have two feet here, three and a half. Then I'm going to measure this other side across here. And I have 17 and a half. So we're going to take those numbers and write them down. We're going to write them down so that we can log this information. One more area that you need to account for is the valley. I'm going to measure this valley. I want to come up a good six feet or so to get inside the warm wall of the house. You got to account for a cable coming up and going back down. So if I go six feet, that's total of 12 feet of cable. I'm going to do this in this valley and the other valley. Next, we're going to want to measure our downspout. Make sure we include this. A lot of homeowners will miss the downspout. If you don't heat this downspout and it freezes up, the water will have nowhere to go. So you make sure you bring that cable down the downspout into a drain. And if you have cement around it like this, take it out past the cement. You do not want a chance water freezing up in your drain. Water will spill up out of this and create an ice rink out here for people to slip on. This is another one of those things that a lot of people miss. You make sure the heat, the heat tape is in the downspout and heats the whole thing. Measuring your downspout, you want to take it from the bottom, go up to your bend. We got about seven feet there. And I'm going to take it even further and take it up to the top. Uh, I got a total of 10. So 10 feet, but I'm also going to account for the drain. To my landscaping is another seven feet. I'm going to round that up to about 20 feet. So 10 on the downspout, 17 across. I'm going to actually round it to 20 feet. At this point, we need to know how far up the roof to take the heat cable. I'm at the edge of the roof right now. Now you need to identify you've got different shingle exposures. You've got exposure number one down towards the edge. You've got two, three, four, and five. We may need to go more, but here's how you know. As you come down below the eave, you will notice your soffit. And your soffit comes back and runs into the wall barrier point right here. As you follow the wall barrier up, this is the exposure line right above the wall barrier. If you notice, we've got four shingle exposures below it. So our goal is to get the cable to this one or 
just past it and go to this one. We're going to target this one today and install it at that point. Now that you know where on your roof you need the heat cable and the lengths for that area, the next step is actually to calculate those lengths so you have the right length of cable for your project. To do this, we've got a link in our description box so you can click on that and go to our next step and calculate those things on your own.